Hello everyone, welcome back to another session on dentistry and more. So today we have a bone disease, which is fibrous dysplasia. Uh, last session we had seen uh, another bone disease that was uh, Paget's disease in which the bone remodeling, the bone uh, resorption and bone formation is affected. In fibrous dysplasia, uh, here the thing is the fibrous tissue develops in place of normal bone. That is fibrous dysplasia. Dysplasia is abnormal multiplication or abnormal formation of cells or tissue. So fibrous tissue is forming in place of normal bone. So what happens? It is causing uh, weakening of the affected bone uh, or it deforms or it create a fracture of those affected bones. So let's get into details of fibrous dysplasia. Fibrous dysplasia, by definition, it is a skeletal development anomaly of the bone forming mesenchyme that manifests as a defect in osteoblastic differentiation and maturation. So, here the most important factor is osteoblast, whereas in Page's disease, we have seen both osteoblast and osteoclastic activity and their role. Here, it is mainly on the osteoblastic differentiation and maturation because it is bone forming in an improper way that is fibrous replacement de replacement is happening so the skeletal developmental anomaly of the bone forming mesenchyme which manifests as a defect in osteoblastic differentiation and maturation so what could be the etiology could be due to a idiopathic factor a non-hereditary factor or mutation of GNS1 gene. So the pathogenesis is GNS1 gene which encodes a G protein which stimulates CAMP that is cyclic AMP production which continues activation of G proteins happening. So overproduction of the CAMP in affected tissues there will be hyperfunction of affected endocrine organs. Ultimately, there will be increased proliferation of melanocytes and there will be large cuffilate spots and also the CAMP effect on differentiation of osteoblast. So, this particular gene which codes for G protein and CAMP is uh, production which stimulates CAMP production which in turn activates the G protein then overproduction of CAMP there will be hyperfunction of affected endocrine organs and increased proliferation of melanocytes and also there will be effect on differentiation of osteoblast so osteoblastic differentiation is interrupted so there will be fibrous formation in place of normal bone so we have various types that is monostotic Polystotic monostotic when it affects a single bone, polystotic it affects more than one bone and McCune Albright syndrome when this fibrous dysplasia is with cephalate spots and endocrine uh, endocrine problems. Um, as a broad syndrome when fibrous dysplasia is with intramuscular myxoma and the gender predilection is equal that is male and females are equally affected. And most commonly seen between 3 to 15 years and in monostotic diseases the asymptomatic they will be asymptomatic till 20 years or 30 years but in polystotic it is asymptomatic till around 10 years so monostotic form the clinical features are uh, it is the most commonly affected form of fibrous dysplasia that is 70 to 80 percentage of the cases are monostotic that it affects only one bone it could be rib femur tibia craniofacial bones or humerus so any of these bones will be affected only one bone and pain pathological fractures will be there and also there could be a painless swelling of jaw that is uh, the labial or buccal plate will be expanded and there will be protuberance of inferior border of mandible if it affects the maxilla or mandible bone formity is basically uh, less severe in monostotic version 
and regarding the teeth there will be malalignment there will be tipping there will be displacement of teeth and uh, if it affects uh, the maxilla bone it will affect the maxillary sinus zygomatic process floor of the orbit and extend to the base of skull so that is a monostotic form it affects only one bone and if it is in the jaw there will be label or buccal plate expansion and protuberance of inferior border of mandible and if it is in maxilla it will affect maxilla sinus zygomatic process floor of orbit and up to base of skull there will be malalignment tipping and displacement of teeth so what if the polystotic form so it is the remaining portion that is 20 to 30 percentage the sides are similar to this one but it affects more than one bones femur tibia pelvis ribs skull facial bones upper extremities lumbar spine clavicle and cervical spine so it, it affects more than one bone that's why it's got polyostrotic and usually it tend to occur in a unilateral distribution but a bilateral distribution also seen and if it is bilateral distribution it will be very asymmetric and pain on limb and spontaneous fractures will be there and bowing of weight bearing bones so there will be bowing of weight bearing bones the longer bones and curvature of femoral neck and shepherd's crook deformity so shepherd's crook the deformity the bending the curvature of bones will be there the shepherd's crook deformity so that is a polystotic form when it affects more than one bone and another two syndromes we have when it is combined with another problems that is McEwen Albright syndrome which is all bones are affected and there will be pigmented lesions that is cephalate spots those are the pigmented lesions and also endocrine disturbances that is McEwen Albright syndrome so what are the endocrine disturbances there will be hyperthyroidism there will be hyperparathyroidism and also Cushing syndrome will be there so this uh, combination of endocrine disturbances, cephalate sports and fibrous dysplasia is known as McEwen Albright syndrome. And another one is Mazabrot syndrome, which is when fibrous dysplasia with intramuscular myxoma and sarcomatous changes, that is carcinomatous changes, that is Mazabrot syndrome, intramuscular myxoma along with fibrous dysplasia and sarcomatous changes so cephalate sports is seen in McQueen albright syndrome and also mesobot syndrome so the most common one is monostotic and uh, the next one is polystotic we have uh, one more type of fibrous dysplasia i forgot to mention it here craniofacial form along with monostotic, polystotic, uh, McKinnon albright syndrome and Mazabot syndrome. So craniofacial fibrous dysplasia, it's seen in 10 to 25 percentage of monostotic and also 50 percentage of polystotic form. So if it is monostotic, it is uh, restricted to craniofacial structures or if it is 50 uh, polystotic, the craniofacial bones also involved because it involves more than one bone. Or it also seen as a isolated craniofacial form that is only within craniofacial bones and uh, what are the bonds affected so it is frontal sphenoid maxillary ethmoid uh, bonds are affected and there will be clinical features like hypertelorism cranial asymmetry visual impairment exophthalmos and blindness so that is a, another uh, type of fibrous dysplasia so that was another type of fibrous dysplasia now let's move on to the lab finding so basically there is no significant change in serum calcium or phosphorus but there is increased alkaline phosphatase and the basal metabolic rate also increased but on a moderate level uh, this alkaline phosphatase increasing we have seen in Page's disease also. So in histologic features, the monostotic and polystotic. The monostotic proliferation of fibroblasts in a compact stroma of interlacing collagen fibers 
and there will be irregular bony trabeculae scattered throughout the lesion and there will not be specific pattern but it's seen as a c-shaped or chinese uh, letter shaped trabeculas are usually coarse woven bone so that is a monostrotic one there will be uh, irregular bony trabeculae scattered throughout the lesion in polystrotic the lesions rich in spindle shaped fibroblast with swirled appearance within the marrow space and islands of cartilaginous tissue within the lesion and affected bones may have cystic lesions lined by multinucleated giant cell so that is in polystrotic form the multinucleated giant cells and islands of cartilaginous tissue within lesion and in craniofacial fibrodysplasia this particular type when it affects the craniofacial bone it is also known as leontiasis osea or lion face syndrome or leontiasis so this uh, particular lion face syndrome not only seen in fibrous dysplasia it is also seen in uh, pages disease we are seen in pages disease and it is also you know, seen in hypothyroidism and uh, renal osteodystrophy so leontiasis uh, is not actually a disease itself but a symptom of uh, these diseases that is it is a symptom of fibrous dysplasia it is a symptom of paget's disease or hyperparathyroidism or renal uh, osteodystrophy so that when it involves facial and uh, uh, cranial bones it looks a lion face uh, giving this name leontiasis osea lion face syndrome or leontiasis well coming to radiographic findings so we have a network of fine bone trabeculae and there will be increased trabeculations that is lesions more opaque and there will be mottled appearance and there is a very characteristic very unique appearance that is ground glass or peat orange appearance that is orange peel appearance that is the opaque areas with many many delicate trabeculates so there will be uh, lots of delicate trabeculae this look like a orange peel appearance or a ground glass appearance which is a very characteristic of fibrous dysplasia orange peel or ground glass appearance so in differential diagnosis uh, we have ossifying fibroma, Paget's disease, osteosarcoma, cherubism, hyperparathyroidism. So in treatment we can uh, go for a conservative treatment to prevent deformity. In polyostotic form we need to go with a multidisciplinary approach and bisphosphonate therapy just like Paget's disease is done to improve the functions decrease pain and decrease the risk of fracture and also various types of surgical corrections so that's all about fibrous dysplasia so the takeaway points is cephalate sports make you now braid syndrome mesobroad syndrome orange peel or ground glass appearance uh, land face syndrome so fibrous dysplasia as the name suggests it is the replacement of uh, normal form by fibrous tissues resulting in fracture or uh, change in uh, form or shapes so that's all about fibrous dysplasia i'll come up with a new topic in dentistry and more in oral pathology thank you